What is going on, Chelsea fans? Thank you for heading over to our YouTube channel. Hey, this is a clip from the entire podcast we did. Uh, it's only a segment. The The full pod is like an hour long, so it doesn't make sense to be on YouTube, but it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts, link in the description. Go check it out. Again, link in the description, but we hope you enjoy this clip. Until next time, Chelsea fans, you know what to do? Keep the blue flag flying high. Moving to Marcus Alonso, uh, the athletic talking about how Lampard absolutely destroyed Alonso, how he went to the bus, kind of just was in a, it was not a good day out for Marcos, I would say. Um, we obviously know we need to offload a left back. <laughs> what? Any, what is going on with this situation right now? Is it Alonzo now being frozen out and like put on the, the, the kind of shop window or is it, was that just in the heat of the moment? Maybe things will settle down. Well, it was already the case because of the nature of the transfer market during COVID that Chelsea were in a position with both the left backs where they're probably going to have to accept whichever best offer they got on, on either of them, whether it be a permanent or a loan, because, you know, Chelsea, it's a difficult market for Chelsea to shift players in because everyone's on high wages and everyone's values are pretty high. Um, look, the, the reality is they've been looking to shift Marcus Alonso for a while. Um, they would have sold him in January. They wanted about £30 million pounds for him. No one wanted to pay £30 million pounds for him. There's, there's been a few windows past now where they would be willing sellers, even though he wasn't up for sale and he wasn't being frozen out, they were willing sellers at, at different times. Um, look at what Alonso did at, at West Brom. Actually, it, it, it would have gone unpunished under previous regimes. You know, Lampard came in, and uh, do you remember there was very early in Lampard's reign the story about all the fines he'd imposed, the huge fines for being late. You know, if you're late, you're fined 10 grand. If you miss training, I think it's 20 grand or something like that. You know, massive fines. And this was because he came and found a culture that he didn't like. You know, he found a culture at Chelsea where the players were being allowed to pretty much do what they liked. It had got very, very lax under Sarri. Um, it probably shifted from one place under Conte where it was too strict and everybody was unhappy because it was too strict and it had gone way too far the other way with, with Sarri. And I, I suspect, and I don't know this as fact, but I suspect that Alonso would have been allowed to go and watch the second half on the bus if he'd have wanted to under Sarri and that stuff like that probably wasn't viewed as being particularly strange. Um, but Lampard was very quick to try and change all that. So Lampard, Lampard is huge on this. And funnily enough, in his press conference on Friday, um, and excuse my language, I don't know whether we're allowed to, uh, a little bit of bad language on the London is Blue podcast, but we talked about a no kids rule um, on Friday ahead of the West Brom game. And it's something the All Blacks rugby team are very big on. And Lampard said that he... He has read the, the All Blacks book and he likes the no heads rule. He wants something like this within Chelsea. And of course, ironically, it's a day before Marcus Alonso, one could argue, acted like a bit of a head. Um, mm. And clearly, he won't tolerate anything like that. Personally, I don't think it has a huge bearing on Alonso's future because they've been open to offers for him from, from January. I don't think it actually changes a lot. Um, it probably solidifies a few opinions on him within the Chelsea coaching staff. Um, but he could stay. If they get a good offer on Emerson, it will be Emerson who goes and Alonso who stays. You know, it's not a Diego Costa situation where the guy can't ever play for the football club again. It's not that serious. So is it looking likely still that Inter in, in Italy ends up being the preferred destination for Alonso or Emerson, or is there well, other interest that's starting well, to pop up? Money. Inter, Inter have been interested in a lot of players and they've got no money. It's why they came in with this strange bid for Kante where they offered several players and a very small amount of cash to Kante because it's, it's all they could muster up. And again, with, with Emerson, they've been sort of interested in him and Alonso all through the summer, but they've got no money. And if it's going to be to Inter, I think it would have to be pretty much alone with them just paying their wages. So... Whether anything better comes up, I don't know. But I, I, I suspect come the final days of the window that one of them will end up going somewhere alone, whether it be into or somewhere else. I don't, I can't see a better deal out there for them at the moment. But maybe, I mean, Marina works magic in these situations. So maybe she has some magic up her sleeve.